the other day, I was having lunch with um, a, a friend on campus, and um, we got uh, my favorite pineapple fried rice from the Thai food cart. Um, I first uh, finished eating it, so I waited uh, my friend for my friend to finish it, and he and he said, "Hey, you don't have to wait. We can go if you are done." I was surprised because I thought he wasn't finished yet. And indeed, there are some rice left in his lunchbox. But then I realized that I realized the reason behind this misunderstanding. It was a philosophy that is, that is important to many Japanese people. So I said to him, ah, but I not. And he looked a little confused because he is not a uh, Japanese. So now, motai nai is a um, Japanese term uh, for what a waste, a sense of regret over waste. By the way, this term was even used by the United Nations as a slogan to promote environmental protection and also uh, waste reduction. As a chemical and an environmental engineer, I find this concept to be particularly relevant to Japanese society, because in our country, for example, natural resources are limited, so we must make the most of what we have. Growing up, my parents taught me the importance of not wasting anything, not leaving anything on the plate after meals. Even though I have now lived abroad for almost like three years, I still find myself trying to pick up every last grain of rice. So the picture here on the screen is indeed quite off-putting to me. And of course, this concept, not wasting, applies not only to food, but also other resources in Japan, including water. This map shows the central region of Japan with a big lake and two major cities, Kyoto and uh, Osaka. In Kyoto, residents rely on fresh water from this lake, Lake Biwako, and after being supplied to Kyoto City, it is then purified and discharged into the river. Then Osaka reclaims and uses it as a source of water. Once treated, eventually discharged into the ocean. So here, because water resources in Japan are quite limited, so we use it in one city, Kyoto, and, we, and then we recycle it for use in another. So this practice is actually not uncommon in other parts of the world. So it's indeed referred to as a de facto water reuse. When I first learned about this concept and the practice in college, I was grateful for the advanced water treatment technology that made it possible. And I was also grateful as a resident in Osaka that we get to use tap water at home without any health concerns. So now let's talk about that glass of tap water here. Many of you may think that it contains only water, but in fact, it contains many salts and minerals as well. And they must be maintained at a certain concentration range. Otherwise, they become harmful. For example, water without any minerals at all is highly toxic to the human body. And indeed, that kind of water is called ultra pure water. So having a well-balanced composition of salts and minerals in our drinking water is crucial. However, Sometimes balance, maintaining that balance can be a challenge, especially during the water treatment processes. 
if the concentration of mineral salts become too high, it can cause various issues. So now let's take a look what happens when that occurs. These pipelines are typically used in water treatment facilities. So when the concentration, mineral concentrations become super saturated, meaning exceeding their solubility limit, salts and minerals precipitate out onto the system surface. So the precipitation, for those of you who may not be familiar with the term precipitation, it is a phase transformation from liquid phase to solid phase. So this occurs because there are too many mineral ions in water, so they are no longer happy being surrounded by certain number of water molecules. So they don't want to remain in the liquid water phase anymore. So those salts, minerals, accumulate on the surface and form a thick layer that increases cleaning costs, environmental damage, while decreasing equipment lifespan. So in order to prevent this, we need to stabilize mineral ions in water so that they remain in water phase and do not precipitate out to the surface. But how can we do this? We are searching for answers in nature. This tiny, almost invisible living organism you see here on the screen is called a diatom. Diatoms are found in almost all natural water bodies, such as oceans, lakes, and rivers. So what makes them really unique is that this, they have a white cell walls with highly ordered three-dimensional nanopatterns. And the process of making such accurate architecture at nanoscale is fascinating. Diatoms absorb mineral ions from water outside of their bodies and use them one by one as a building block to construct their cell walls. So we are inspired by this process and indeed have been applying it to our work in the laboratory here at Yale. A better understanding of diatoms is helping us develop innovative methods to prevent mineral precipitation in water treatment systems. Water scarcity is one of the most pressing global challenges of our time. Currently, more than one third of the world's population lives in water stressed countries and regions. And this problem is expected to become even worse with the rapid expansion of the world population and climate change, as indicated in red on this map. My colleagues and I aim to address this issue by making safe and affordable drinking water accessible to all those in need, especially individuals living in rural areas. Thank you.